And the last folk singer, he's up on the stage Just for a minute, you can't tell his age But he's telling the truth like a prophet or sage So raise your glass to the last folk singer Hola amigos, how are you? This is old Blanco Brad Boyer here at uh, the Quarantina Republic Boot Company, 4222 San Felipe, Houston, Texas, River Oaks. You guys might recognize uh, Senor Roberto Rodriguez from another episode, but uh, this time we have somebody uh, extra special. <laughs> Sorry, inside joke there. But um, uh, the percussionist, Mr. Shane Lauder, is a very good friend of mine. Mr. Shane, what do Hello, you say? how you doing? Hello. Good morning and good afternoon, or what time of the day it is. <laughs> whatever, uh, whatever time of the day you're having your uh, activities, good afternoon. <laughs> That's why we call them special, Good midnight everybody. snack. <laughs> so we're going to play some songs for you guys. And um, Shane, uh, we're going to hear from Shane about... Being a percussionist, we don't like drummers, right? Drummers are too loud. Well, they can be. They can they be. have a proclivity. Proclivity, right? Yes. What's the difference between a drummer and a percussionist? Uh, pay scale. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's probably true. That's probably true. But Shane, like, uh, so for all the kiddos out there. Um, let me hear a story. Uh, tell me about why you wanted to be a drummer, why you wanted to be a person, or, or someone that you admire. It was an accident, really. Yeah. Actually, it was completely an accident. I mean, you know, when I was a kid, maybe about five years old, my mom, she got me into some guitar lessons. I think I went to the first lesson. She, I come back from the lesson. She's like, well, what did you think of your guitar lesson? I said, I don't like it very much. It hurts my fingers. <laughs> I don't want to do that again. And so one guitar lesson... And then I was like back to banging on stuff, and then I took some piano lessons because they didn't hurt my fingers as much. And then I mean I don't know I picked up a drum set in 1984 as a graduation present from the eighth grade. Oopa told my age, didn't what I? What kind of? Uh, <laughs> I don't think our audience can add very well. All right, good. Um, <laughs> What kind I of drum can, set was it? They're paying those prices for boots. <laughs> yeah, exactly. What kind of drum set was it? Slingerland. Actually, it was a Slingerland from the 60s. It was one of those collectible rare ones. At the time, they were just a dime a dozen, though. Well, and you and you uh, don't just play drums, but you refinish drums and bring drums back to life. And, and, and then I kill drums. them, and then I bring them back to life again. Yes, you're correct. Well, so um, so for all the kids who like to bang on things... Uh, we'd like to give you a little song. Uh, this would be a little bit of a rock and roll song, so uh, Shane's haircut uh, will allow his hair to come in his face like Jerry Lee when he rocks out. Uh, we know he likes that. This is a rock and roll song called I Mean When I Drink, and I drink a little bit all the time. <laughs> Well, I'm heading out of Houston and going out of New Orleans. 
when you drink and you drink a little all of the time. Hear me when I drink and I drink a little all of the time. I mean when I drink and I drink a little all of the time All right. Thank you so very much. Brad Boyer here, and I'm really enjoying putting this show together for artists like me, with artists like me, and you can help us uh, support these artists by going to the Patreon page, Fireball y Blanco. Well, welcome back, everybody, to the Republic Boot Company Quarantina 4222 San Felipe, Houston, Texas, River Oaks. And the last folk singer, Ain't Nobody Cares. For this segment, we're just sitting in our chairs. And I am here with my friend Shane Lauder, percussionist and uh, accordion virtuoso, Senor Roberto Rodriguez. <laughs> How do you do it? Rodriguez. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Numero tres. <laughs> and uh, we're going to talk about some music and art and, uh, and cool stuff. And um, thank you guys for uh, hanging out with us. Uh, make sure, please, to subscribe to our channel. Uh, Fireball y Blanco is the Patreon account. Um, Republic Boot uh, Company at Facebook. Robert, you have Facebook. Yes, sir. My own name, Roberto Rodriguez the Third. Yeah, and that's and you have to say it like that too. <laughs> Shane doesn't have a Facebook, but um, you can probably Google him and find out uh, what his um, mugshot looks like. Um, <laughs> <laughs> And, uh, I'm just embarrassed because I dress in drag on my Facebook. It doesn't fit, it doesn't fit the paradigm of what we're doing yeah. here. And so, uh, again, we're here for artists, uh, creators, authors, podcasters, uh, sculptors, and uh, just general people who uh, like really cool stuff. Um, so this is the interview segment. This is where I ask them questions. And, uh, and then we play off each other, right? That, that's how it's going to work. So, Robert, um, tell me something Keep your about. yourself. <laughs> Why don't you love me anymore? <laughs> I don't so, so tell, like you used to do. tell me something about um, where do you think accordion music is going after this? A dumpster. <laughs> That's what Shane always tells me. Yeah. No, but I think actually accordion music is actually uh, it's surprising a lot of people because when I started learning this, uh, it was almost like I had to keep it a secret because it w it just wasn't cool to learn accordion. But nowadays, you start finding it in so many forms of music, and uh, not just here in Texas, but. Um, of course, it's a worldwide instrument, but there's been a lot of bands from Europe um, and uh, and in Mexico that have been making it very popular. Uh, you know, I have friends uh, uh, that are in Flog and Molly, and, mm -hmm. you know, they yeah. have an accordion in there. Uh, and we have uh, Malita Vecindad and uh, Gran Silencio uh, that are in Mexico that, you know, use accordion every once in a while. So that kind of gives it a, a different... It gives it a different platform than just listening to just uh, Tex-Mex music. So yeah. it gives it a form, another f a platform to kind of keep going and, and uh, uh, kind of being introduced to the world, even though it's an old world instrument and it's always been around. If you go anywhere around the world, any folk music that you hear around the world still consists of the accordion because it's such, such an old world instrument. But um, it kind of got lost. 
I think. And nowadays it's been kind of, uh, uh, I've been getting a lot of requests of a lot of uh, younger generations trying to, you know, that's something that they want to want to learn and try to get into because it's such a unique instrument and uh, there's not many people that, that, that still continue to play it right now. Well, and, and that's kind of um, one of the emphasis uh, of what we're going to try to do is um, on this on this channel on this show is uh, why do you why do you, what makes you or what made you have the opinion that wasn't cool? You know what I mean? Because to me, it's super cool. It sounds awesome, and anytime you can create new things. Oh, well, I always you know, thought it was know. awesome. Yeah, yeah. It, was, it yeah. wasn't cool. Man. Wasn't <laughs> no, but that, you know that—that's what I mean. Like, so why? Like, so so you, you get into it and you start, you, you know, like, uh, like the Texas tornadoes. Like yeah. we we all love that, right? Yeah. Or or we like um, we all like to play like Western swing stuff, Bob yeah. stuff. When I was a kid, was my dad my played fail. that to me, you know. Yeah. Yeah, and and my grand and my grandfather played it, and I loved it. I thought it was super cool, but it wasn't like cool in junior high, you know, like no. at school. No, it wasn't. So what rock do you think roll, about man. that? What do you think? What do you think that's gonna do? Uh, you think it's rock and roll? That, no, it that wasn't. Did? You wouldn't. You know. The, you know. Because I, nowadays, you know, rock and roll, real rock and roll. When is I was cool. a kid, the only time you ever like, saw like an accordion player. Uh, outside of like certain like ethnic cultures, it was like Weird Al Yankovic making like sort of parody <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. songs, you know. Yeah, so, so that, 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 that you know, uh, like it was those stereotypes, and especially, uh, especially one of the biggest ones that I've always heard my entire life was like, oh, Steve Urkel. You know, they always gave him that kind of the nerdy look, yeah. and he'd always have that accordion, and it it always uh, uh, I guess the public gave it gave it the the uh, the view as a kind of like a nerdy instrument where it was it just it just wasn't cool to do. Where, where do you think that came from? Because if you if you look at the tornadoes like on like on a vintage Austin City Limits, yeah. I think, None of those dudes look nerdy. They look no, cool as them. hell. Dude. None of them do. And I, I actually don't know where that that uh, comes from. Well, I'm serious, man. Like when I was like starting out playing drums, there were like some old timers that would hire me for their Polish polka and waltz bands, and those were the only dudes playing like accordion. Well, I guess yeah. You know, and I so guess, it was so just like, and this is well after like rock and roll had been established. Rock and roll was already 30 years old at this point, <laughs> yeah. and like so these or guys were like, older. like yeah. Cause you're you're only like 25. yeah I'm only 23 24 <laughs> yeah but uh, <laughs> oh yeah so, so you know really yeah the only people that were playing it were traditionalists you know and traditionalists just weren't cool man it just wasn't a thing that you wanted to do when you were like starting out as a musician but you'd take it because the money was good you go to play at these like uh, volunteer fire department like dances or whatever with these old timers and you know get fifty bucks. Well the, well, the other thing... Pay too, hasn't changed much. <laughs> you know, that's other, all I got to say about the, that. Patreon. Fireball y Blanco. But actually, one of, the, one of the biggest distinctions that people don't ever pay attention to is that whenever you thought about the accordion, everybody thought about a big piano accordion that had piano key, keys on one side oh, and all oh, these yeah, buttons, yeah, right? Buttons. So that was, that was all what people pictured. But I think what you're talking about, like with Texas Tornadoes, in Tex-Rex music and and also in other uh, folk music like in uh, in German and Czech and and and, uh, Ger and Polish, we had the button accordion, which was much smaller. Yeah. Now that's the stuff that you find like in Louisiana. They have the button accordions in one row, two rows, and also in South Texas and in Mexico and also in Europe. That is what mostly everybody used as far as a. Uh, uh, that's that is what, it, what what an accordion is actually known for in the world. But uh, the concept of an accordion being known as a big piano thing, I think, came out of the West uh, because um, the first accordions ever that came out were all button accordions. There was no keyboard accordions at all. They were all mostly button accordions, and it wasn't until it reached the West that that's when they transformed it into what most people consider the accordion now. Um, and I think that big hunk of instrument was just not cool to carry around, but it, at the same time, the people that were playing the button accordions, they were out at the bars, or well, not bars back then, but like at the parties, at the gatherings, um, and so it was a considered, it was considered kind of an old time instrument, but like also considered to just be like cantina music, like bar music, or or just you know, it, it wasn't it wasn't class classical music, you know, so it was it was more a, a, 
of uh, kind of like a no-no music to listen to, like the blues were when. Yeah. When, you know. Well, like, and that and that and that's interesting to me because it seems like that no matter what's popular, you know, I mean, who's going to remember a Justin Bieber song in fifty years? Exactly. But Hank Williams' music mm. will exist until there's no more people playing music. Yeah. You know what I mean? So if you like accordion music though, or if you you may or may not know if you like it or not, but you have the opportunity once a week to catch Robert and I in a band called Goat Leather. Yes. That's every Wednesday from eight PM to ten PM at the Cotton Mouth Club, downtown Houston, the hundred block of Maine. And we Street. do metal as well. Yeah. On accordion. Hair metal. Yeah, classic metal folk. Classic metal. Until, classic metal until Nirvana comes and ruins it for them. Um, <laughs> also surprised. sponsured by uh, uh, Bullet Bourbon. Correct? Yeah, Bullet yeah Bourbon. it is sponsored by Bullet. Bullet Bourbon. Um, well, I'm seeing the yellow paper we that reminds me. We need more sponsors, me, yeah. and this is one of them right here that you might want to check out and help us out here. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. Uh, please ring the bell. Uh, our Patreon, Fireball y Blanco. That's myself and my friend Fireball Bill, who is called Fireball Bill because he likes to party with Fireball Whiskey. And he will take one Fireball Whiskey shot for every person who signs up and, uh, and contributes to these fine gentlemen and the... Uh, so people let's try to get ten people yeah. in like yeah. less than We're, two minutes. Yeah, so that we'll yeah. next be setting up. Uh, we'll we, we'll set up a GoFundMe for a liver transplant after that, and then we're all good. All right. Hey guys, this is Fireball Bill at Quarantina at the Republic Boot Studios. Uh, we're here to support our artists, and the way that you can help support our artists is logging in to uh, Patreon at Fireball e. Blanco and show us your love. Thank you. From the funeral home Stood off to the side in the shade The preacher conducting the service Folded his hands and he prayed The pallbearers carried the casket family was all gathered round The wind moaned the dirt through West Texas On the day We laid it down We lay her beside old Doc Stakely Passed only two years before Fifty plus years of together We won't be apart anymore The dusty red dirt of West Texas Where the cotton grows up high and white the sky's big and blue The wind whips on through And my heart Was heavy as Some folks, they say dead is just dead. Those who have died are just gone. And some folks are waiting on Jesus to come down and carry us home. But I know when you die in West Texas, you don't stay where 
your body has been No one need come down to fetch you You ride home In the West Texas wind Dusty red dirt of West Texas Where the cotton grows up high and white The skies big and blue The wind whips on through And I know That my soul will be right And I'll ride On the West Texas swim Thank you so very much for listening to us, folks. We are at the Republic Boot Quarantina, 4222 San Felipe, Houston, Texas, River Oaks. My friend Roberto Rodriguez and my buddy back here on the percussion, my uh, Paul English, if you will, <laughs> Mr. Shane Lauder. <laughs> Shane, so one of the, one of my favorite things about playing with Shane is uh, is dynamic. So Shane, can you tell us a little bit ab about that? Uh, if you're playing drums or playing percussion or something, like about timing. It's not all about just banging away, right? Like I mean, that's cool, but it's it's, it's the dynamic. Oh yeah, you know, you just gotta know when to be uh, loud, and then when you gotta be know when to be not so loud, and then less loud, and then lesser lesser loud. <laughs> and I guess the the baseline <laughs> is loud for starters, and then. So I'd like to say this that. out loud. If you dig this and you dig Robert, you dig Shane, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Ring the bell. Uh, check out our Patreon. It's Fireball Blanco. That's who's bringing this to you. My friend uh, Fireball Bill Meeks is over there. He'll take a shot of Fireball every time you ring that bell for sure. And uh, also at republicbootcompany.com, bradboyermusic.net, Roberto... Just on Facebook, on all that. Just find it. Click on all the links that we Go post at the bottom of the thing. Uh, Bullet uh, Bourbon is sponsoring these two fine gentlemen. They give them uh, each a bottle of uh, whiskey to stay at home and not talk to anybody or go out of their house, <laughs> uh, which doesn't work, apparently. Um, so thank you, guys. And what we would like to do now is say goodbye. It's time to hit the trail. And the last folk singer still on the stage and just for a minute you can't tell his age now he's a telling you the truth like a prophet or sage raise a glass to the last folk singer one more time raise a glass to the last folk singer. Adios, amigos. See you down the trail. And the last folk singer, he's up on the stage. And just for a minute, you can't tell his age. He's a telling the truth like a prophet or sage. So raise your glass to the last folk singer Raise your glass to the last folk singer